Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for being here again. Earlier today, uh, I conducted a unified command group meeting um, with all the various agencies in the state of Louisiana plus FEMA, uh, and certainly we uh, got an update from the National Weather Service on Hurricane Zeta. So I want to start the, the uh, press conference uh, there. <clears throat> the forecast since we spoke yesterday has largely remained the same as it relates to Zeta. We're still expecting a landfall early tomorrow evening in southeast Louisiana of a Category 1 hurricane. The primary impacts will be the wind, and most of the damage that will happen will, will occur because of the wind. However, there will be some storm surge associated with it. There will also be some rain, and there's always the potential that uh, even though the overall rainfall totals from the hurricane will be relatively low, if you're in an area uh, where a rain band sets up and, and drops for some period of time, you could have heavier uh, rain than others. Uh, we also know that there is an increased potential for tornadoes uh, to result uh, because of the hurricane as well. Um, but with a landfall tomorrow evening, that means that you really have the rest of today and tomorrow morning uh, in order to prepare yourself and your family, your business, whatever it might be for the impacts of the hurricane. One of the uh, things about this storm that, that we actually like to see compared to other storms that move very slowly is that the storm should uh, increase its forward speed. It's moving at about 14 miles per hour, I think, presently. Uh, when it makes landfall, it should be in the 20 mile an hour range and potentially a little bit faster than that. That's one of the reasons why we don't think there will be as much uh, rainfall uh, in, in the area. Uh, however, uh, there will be considerable uh, wind and the potential for wind damage. And as you know, uh, that's damage to homes, businesses, but also to infrastructure and, and including our electrical uh, system. We expect that the sustained winds will be greatest in the lower Terrebonne uh, to St. Bernard area and extreme south east Louisiana. But I want you to look at that storm track um, and if the storm actually makes landfall where the western portion of the cone uh, intersects with Louisiana's coastline, that puts the vast majority of the New Orleans metropolitan area uh, in that zone for having the greatest impacts from this hurricane, and that is certainly a possibility. Further, I would remind everybody that one-third of the time a hurricane makes landfall completely outside of the cone. And so there's a lot of southeast Louisiana that really needs to be very mindful, very diligent, and needs to remain weather aware uh, so that they know what's going on and they'll have a better idea of what they can expect. But with that hurricane making landfall tomorrow evening, uh, it is imperative that people use the time they have available today and early tomorrow to make sure that they prepare themselves. Uh, no one should be complacent because it's late October, uh, and it certainly feels like hurricane season should be behind us because historically speaking, we don't typically get them uh, this late uh, in the year. Uh, but hurricane season is not over, and in fact, it won't be over until the end of next month. I also do want to remind everybody that we are preparing for uh, Hurricane Zeta and continuing to respond to hurricanes Laura and Delta uh, during a COVID public health emergency. Uh, and during this COVID-19 environment, it's imperative that everyone take the necessary, the necessary precautions as you prepare for the storm and as you do anything, uh, whether it's work-related or, or going to the store, whatever your daily activities are, uh, please uh, take every precaution. Because we are certainly seeing, and whether you call it the second wave or the third surge, we're seeing that all over the country uh, today. Uh, and I'll get into our numbers here uh, in just a moment. Uh, but it is absolutely imperative that individuals continue to wear their masks with the face covering, social distance when they're around people who are not from their immediate household, wash your hands frequently with soap and water, stay home when you're, you're sick, and, and continue to uh, protect those who are most vulnerable. 
Earlier this afternoon, I sent a letter to President Trump requesting yet another pre-landfall disaster declaration from the federal government. Uh, we are already coordinating with our federal partners uh, for COVID and the other devastating storms that have already impacted our state. And earlier today, I was able to communicate with Pete Gaynor, the administrator of FEMA. Uh, so he is obviously paying attention to what's going on. And we have a coordinating officer who's been embedded with us uh, for months now. Uh, and we continue to have a uh, great partnership there uh, with FEMA and all the other federal partners but also working through FEMA Region 6 uh, in Texas uh, and the uh, regional administrator uh, there, Tony Robinson. Uh, obviously, uh, the pre-landfall disaster declarations are very helpful because it gets resources moving and it, it allows us to know that we can take the necessary steps uh, related uh, to um, certain uh, precautions and, and know that the federal government's gonna help us with those. Uh, you know, for example, uh, as it relates to sheltering and so forth, should that become necessary. The Coastal Protection and Restoration Authority is tracking 689 gates across the coastal zone. As of this morning, 207 are closed. Uh, that's up from 181 yesterday. We don't envision uh, that more gates will be closed other than just a, a potential handful and that is unless there is going, there is another shift uh, in the storm track to the west. Uh, if, it, if the track stays where it is, we don't anticipate uh, many more gates uh, being closed. Uh, the CPRA also received pump requests from Grand Isle and Jefferson Parish, but also from St. Bernard Parish, and those flood fighting assets are being delivered today. There are some evacuations in place and I'm going to run them down um, for you in just a moment but I do encourage you for the remainder of this event to tune in and pay close attention to your local officials to your officers of emergency preparedness your parish presidents and so forth and heed their guidance when it comes to everything storm related and that certainly includes evacuations so I know that there are Grand uh, Isle, uh, Grand Isle has initiated uh, an evacuation today uh, at noon in Plaquemines Parish, there's a voluntary evacuation for mobile homes. Uh, in Lafouche Parish, uh, mandatory evacuation, when I say mo mobile homes, we're talking about trailers, uh, travel trailers there. Uh, Lafouche Parish, a mandatory evacuation called uh, for tomorrow at 6 a.m. south of the Lee, Ontario floodgates in, uh, in the Golden, Mer Golden Meadow area. In Orleans Parish, there's a voluntary evacuation at 6 p.m. today for Venetian Isles. In Terrebonne Parish, a mandatory evacuation south of the Morgan to the Gulf uh, levee system, uh, voluntary at 10 a.m. for the Point Ashen area. I can tell you that state offices will be closed in Grand Isle tomorrow, and state offices remain closed in Cameron Parish uh, because of the widespread power outage there. Due to the preparations for Hurricane Zeta, the, uh, the drive-through COVID test sites operated by the Louisiana National Guard uh, in the following areas are closed today and tomorrow. Uh, the New Orleans, Baton Rouge, and South Central, uh, Acadiana, and the North Shore area. Uh, the Department of Health and National Guard will make a decision after the storm uh, as to when to reopen testing and resume testing in those areas. Uh, presently, the National Guard has more than 1,400 uh, soldiers and airmen activated in support of emergency operations. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about safety because if you have a wind event, uh, there's a good chance we will be without electricity for some period of time. Uh, I will remind individuals that we had nine deaths uh, after Hurricane Laura related to uh, generator usage. So if you find yourself without power uh, and you're going to run a generator, please make sure that you position the generator outside and at least 20 feet from your home. Uh, make sure it's in a well-ventilated area and not underneath a window or by a door or a vent, certainly not in a crawl space or a garage and absolutely not in your home. If you have to refuel your generator, please make sure that you allow it to cool for 20 minutes uh, before you pour the fuel into it. It is a good time to uh, check your batteries on your 
smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. And if you don't have one, uh, please uh, get a carbon monoxide detector uh, uh, installed in your home. It's also possible that we're going to have some much cooler temperatures in the next several days. And so individuals may use heaters for the first time this year. And if you're going to use a space heater, uh, please make sure that you don't uh, operate that space heater within three feet of anything that is combustible. Um, and never cover your space heater. We do have a few updates um, for those impacted by Hurricanes Delta and Laura. Today, FEMA approved an extension for those impacted by Hurricane Laura to register for FEMA assistance. So I mentioned a deadline to you yesterday, uh, and that deadline was today. Uh, the good news is the new deadline is November the 27th, so we have an additional 30 days. So if you suffered damage from Hurricane Laura, you've not yet uh, registered with FEMA, you have an additional month to do so, please register at disasterassistance.gov. That's disasterassistance.gov. Today, there are 3,606 Louisianans in shelters. Uh, 3,450 of those are still sheltering from Hurricane Laura. Um, and they are in uh, 3,416 of those, so almost all of them are in seven hotels, five of which are in New Orleans, one in Baton Rouge, one in Lafayette. 34 evacuees are currently at the Alexandria Mega Shelter. Uh, there are 156 Hurricane Delta evacuees. Uh, 143 of those are at a hotel in New Orleans. And by the way, that's not one of the five hotels uh, that are holding Delta evacuees, so there are a total of six hotels in New Orleans right now uh, that are uh, performing uh, as non-congregate shelters. The other 13 Delta evacuees are in the mega shelter in Alexandria, and that includes medical special needs. Fourteen parishes have been approved for 45 percent DSNAP replacement benefits uh, because at least uh, half of their parish lost power during Hurricane Delta. Uh, now, as far as we know, this is the first time the federal government has ever granted replacement benefits for DSNAP recipients. Uh, and the reason this happened is you had a second hurricane hit within, uh, I think it was six weeks of the first one, but only 13 miles separated uh, the landfall location. Uh, and so the federal government uh, decided to do this at our request, and we very much appreciate them doing so. Um, the request uh, is unprecedented, and, and, uh, and, but so was the nature of these storms. So that's with respect to DSNAP. And, of course, DSNAP is a nutrition benefit that's available to individuals who do not qualify for regular SNAP. Those people who are on regular SNAP benefits also get a 45% replacement. So if you lost food purchased with SNAP or DSNAP benefits uh, and were not approved for automatic replacement benefits, you can complete a form on the DCFS website. Uh, the deadline has been extended to November the 9th, um, and that deadline is generally 10 days after the storm. Uh, for more information about this, because I know it can be very confusing when you're talking about SNAP and DSNAP and replacement benefits and so forth, uh, but all of this information is available at dcfs.la.gov. Uh, mosquito control is an important part of the recovery mission. Aerial spraying is scheduled to continue tonight in Lafayette, Jefferson Davis, and Acadia parishes. Uh, due to Hurricane Zeta, we're not anticipating any flights on Wednesday night. If weather permits, uh, flights will resume on Thursday, um, but obviously the schedule for uh, these flights uh, will be weather dependent. I do want to briefly go over today's COVID numbers. We are reporting 885 cases today on 20,711 new tests. Unfortunately, we're also reporting 18 new deaths today for a total of 5,666. Hospitalizations are down by nine with 600 patients hospitalized across the state of Louisiana with COVID-19. Ventilator usage, however, is uh, up, and it's by 20, and that's a significant increase uh, with 91 patients on ventilators 
uh, and we're double checking to make sure that the reports were correct. We don't normally see uh, uh, ventilator usage going up by 20, uh, and especially when the number of people in the hospital actually decreased uh, by a small amount. Despite the challenges that we faced in recent weeks and all the additional mobility in the state of Louisiana because of uh, preparations for and responding to and recovering from hurricanes and, and other things that's been going on in Louisiana, we have been able to maintain the plateau in, in, our, in our cases and our hospitalizations. Um, and that's a good thing, but we know it's because of the mitigation measures that are in place. So again, as you are preparing for Hurricane Zeta, or it, whatever you're doing out there across the state of Louisiana, and wherever you are, whether you're in southeast Louisiana or elsewhere, uh, please don't forget to wear your mask, social distance, wash your hands, stay home if you're sick, and protect the vulnerable. I know we're asking folks to manage a lot, and we've been talking about lots of disasters and, and public health emergencies for a long time. Uh, but I know that our people are going to remain focused and do what is necessary to get through uh, this storm and be good neighbors to one another. Um, please use the rest of today wisely and tomorrow morning. If you haven't yet done so and you're in the storm's path, please visit getagameplan.org. Uh, and remember that having a game plan in place for a storm is different this year than it has been in the past because of COVID-19. Please monitor 511LA.org for road closures. Do not attempt to drive on flooded roadways. Uh, please make sure that you are weather aware, that you're paying attention to the National Weather Service, to your local news stations, and that you're heeding the advice and guidance coming from your local elected officials. And then as we continue to prepare for the worst that we can expect from this storm, uh, I would ask that you also continue to pray for the best. Um, finally, before I take questions, I did want to acknowledge a tremendous career of public service by a very dedicated uh, law enforcement professional, and that is Colonel Kevin Reeves, who today announced his retirement after three decades as a Louisiana State Trooper. That retirement will be effective on Friday. Um, and I will tell you, I have come to know, to know uh, Kevin Reeves very well uh, because of the day-to-day -day things that always happen in state government involving law enforcement, but also because of all of the natural disasters, the COVID public health emergency, and, and many other things that have meant that he and I have forged a very strong uh, working relationship. Um, and I, I will tell you that he has performed tremendously well and I wish him nothing but the best uh, going forward, uh, not just for him, but for also for his family. Uh, and as I mentioned, his retirement will be effective on Friday. And I anticipate uh, naming a new superintendent of state police uh, relatively soon. I don't have an exact timeline for you, uh, but when I reach a decision, you will be among the very first to know. Uh, next press conference we're anticipating tomorrow 3 p.m. at GOSEP. We'll be back um, at, at GOSEP uh, tomorrow for UCG. I'll be working out of GOSEP and then we will have our press conference in the training room where we've, where we've met in the past. So with that, I'm going to pause take your questions. I obviously have Dr. Gidry here with me today uh, who is able to answer specific COVID uh, related questions that I may not be able to respond to. Yes, sir. Governor, did either you or your office suggest to Colonel Reeves that this, this would be a good time for him to retire? No. Yes, ma'am. Um, there had, has been some discussion about one of the uh, turbines being down and the flood protection yeah. system in New Orleans. Have you been in conversations with uh, the New Orleans mayor, and is there any concern about the ability of the flood protection system to drain the street? Yeah, well, it, first of all, in any time that you have um, turbines that are down and you, you're concerned about uh, generating electricity necessary to run the pumps, we know that all the pumps are operational. That's a good thing. Um, we have communications ongoing. Um, I know that uh, my chief of staff, Mark Cooper, has, has recently spoken with uh, John Pusho, who is the mayor's chief of staff, but we also have embedded uh, in the Orleans Parish uh, 
Office of Emergency Preparedness, OSEP. Uh, we have uh, National Guardsmen um, who, who are there. And so we're getting the reports. Um, and I'm not going to say that I'm overly concerned about it, uh, but I will tell you we're trying to get to the bottom of it because there's been a little miscommunication as to exactly what the status is and whether the turbine is, that's down is down because it, it's, it, whether it's, it's a, a source of primary power or whether it's a redundant source of power that, that would, would not normally be called upon. Uh, but we're, we're working through that right now. Um, clearly, that's not a good thing uh, anytime to have turbines down. Um, and, uh, you know, we do hope that the forecast at least uh, remains correct that this is going to be a fast moving storm that won't drop uh, the kind of rain that we've seen from other hurricanes, including Delta, uh, but also Hurricane Sally, I think it was, that went east um, and into the uh, Mississippi and Alabama area. Uh, and, but obviously, you know, we're not in control of that and we're not in control of the exact track. And as I mentioned before, if landfall comes in west of where it's currently projected, that does put the New Orleans region uh, in line for the most significant impacts uh, from uh, this particular hurricane. So we're, we're trying to get to the, to the bottom of it. I'm, I'm not overly concerned right now, uh, but, but I'll let you know if that, if that changes. But to be clear, you do not know currently if that's a primary source of power for the pumps or yeah. if it's a secondary source of power, and that seems like a pretty critical thing to, to know. Well, it, it does, and, and so there was some, there was some uh, discussion about that, exactly what the situation was, and, and we are trying to resolve it uh, as we speak. Um, and I just, I don't have that answer for you, and I don't want to, to misstate what the facts are. Um, so when we get that, we'll, we'll certainly let you know. Uh, yeah, because one of the reports that I got is that the status of the pumps is 100%, and I think that to be accurate, and the status of the, of the turbines is no different than it's been over the last several weeks. Um, but but I'm really not comfortable with that because I don't remember hearing um, that these turbines were in fact down before. And so we're, we're working through that as we speak. But I mean, I can tell you, I, I know that they're working, if possible, to get any of those turbines back up and operational before before landfall. Um, and I, I, but I'm not sure that that's going to be possible either. Yes, sir. What was the reason Colonel Reeves gave Hiring and, and had you lost any confidence in Colonel Reeves given some of the recent issues that have come to light? Uh, the second question is, is I'll answer first. No, I, I didn't lose any confidence in Colonel Reeves. Um, and I said so when asked a couple of weeks ago, I think, uh, by some members of the press. Uh, Colonel Reeves uh, actually let me know uh, ahead of the election last year uh, of his approximate timeline for retiring and it would be towards the end of my first year uh, in the second term. So it, it, wasn't, it wasn't a surprise, and nor was it anything that I asked for. Um, and so the reason for his retirement is one that, that you'll have to ask him. I guess 30 years um, is enough. Uh, and, and that's a determination that he made um, you know, at least a year ago. Um, and he, he kept that timeline. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, Governor, in some states, uh, we've seen where the governors have been calling up the National Guard to help with um, elections issues, concerns about election security, um, you know, helping with early voting lines. Are, are we going to be using the National Guard in Louisiana in any way involved with elections at this point? You know, it, it would require an extreme emergency that, that we don't uh, have uh, uh, in place right now or um, that, that I even contemplate. Um, and uh, I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with it, but, but I have a, a real reluctance to using a uniformed National Guardsmen uh, at polling places. Uh, and, and so we, we're just not intending to do that. I will tell you that for many weeks now, we've had an election task force working out of GOSEP because of the two hurricanes and the COVID public health emergency to make sure that we're, we're working with the Secretary of State to provide whatever assistance they need as it relates to conducting the investigation. Uh, things from assisting with PPE and, and, and uh, making sure that in advance, for example, of Hurricane Zeta, 
uh, that we're communicating with all the power companies where the registrar or voter offices are, where the polling places are, so that they can be first in priority for power restoration so that the election can happen on Tuesday. Um, so, and, and as you know, early voting concludes today, so that shouldn't be impacted. Um, but we did also sign a, a bill into law that allows um, for um, early votes and, and to, to be organized uh, ahead of election day to a degree that they normally are not. Uh, but we're working with the Secretary of State on, on things like that. But I, I do not uh, intend uh, presently to use any National Guardsmen uh, to uh, do crowd control or, or anything like that at our polling places. Any, yes, sir. On that note, um, over the weekend, Reuters reported that the Louisiana National Guard was called in to respond to a cyber attack on some registrar of the voters in, in North Louisiana. Can you confirm that or provide any additional details on that? Yeah, I, I, first of all, uh, what I'm prepared to say is that the Reuters report appears to be inaccurate in a number of ways. Um, we have uh, been open with you all about cyber attacks in Louisiana that have occurred over the last couple of years. Uh, principally, summer before last, when a number of school districts were hit uh, with ransomware um, and so forth. Um, and we have a very robust effort in Louisiana to respond to, to those attacks. Um, but uh, that, that report, because uh, I read it too, and, and it didn't even disclose the sources uh, for the report, was, was very inaccurate. Um, and as I stand here, I'm, I'm not aware of any attacks on our registrar, registrars of voters' offices. And certainly nothing that would compromise um, our uh, uh, ability to conduct a, an election and that we can all have full confidence in the, in the results. Okay, so thank you all very much. I will see you at three o'clock tomorrow uh, after a UCG meeting. Uh, please everybody pay attention to this weather, get prepared uh, and, and let's watch this, this track uh, and make sure that we take this seriously as we continue to take seriously uh, this COVID public health emergency as well. Uh, so, uh, Let's be good neighbors to one another, and I will see everybody tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Thank you.